So there are approximately 65 speakers that we have this week, all of whom will be sharing really quite different perspectives with regards to what are some of the different choices that we need to make with regards to raw materials? And what are some of the different models that we can explore with regards to how do we find them? How do we extract them from the ground? What kind of business models are there? What sort of economic models are there that allow us to ensure that we we work with our raw materials in the most responsible way possible, but also we manage to unleash their potential fast enough so that we can ensure that energy transition that needs to occur in the most responsible way as well. So I won't steal any of Ludovine's thunder. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go straight to the responsible raw materials website. We've shared the link to that in the chat with all of you just now. So here is the website and the uh, the the tab that you need, of course, is here, 2024 conference. And you can see our lovely little infographic that we put together for today, which is brilliant. We're not going to dive into the detail of it yet, but this is just to spark ideas and to say, okay, so what sorts of different choices do we have when we're thinking about raw materials and what sort of information do we often need when we're trying to make all of these different choices? Down at the bottom of this page, of course, this is where we can find the agenda, be it for today, Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning. Yep, you get it all the way through until Friday morning. We can take bets now as to whether I will still have a voice left by Friday morning. Let's hope I do. Um, but we've got a huge, fantastic array of people lined up to speak to us this week. But of course, Responsible Raw Materials started a number of years ago. And if I go into our past events, you can find a load of the details from our 2020 conference. So let's just take a step back and think about, OK, where were we in May 2020? The world was a slightly different place <laughs> back then. We had one or two things that we were all trying to deal with. And those of you who can remember maybe dialing into that conference will remember we had things like um, drawing competitions during the conference. And they were not only designed so that we could see what some of you thought a mine actually was, but so that we could also entertain children, for example, that might be dialing into the conference at the same time as yourselves. You can find by clicking on all of these little buttons here, some blogs or some reminders as to what we talked about back in 2020, where the theme of the conference was just responsible raw materials. It was going to be a one-off. But if I then scale down here, you can see here are all of the fantastic speakers who came and joined us for that week of delightful knowledge sharing and discussion. It was absolutely fantastic. And when we got to the end of the week, the pool was such that everybody decided, hang on, I think we should do another one of these. And of course, that then takes us through, apologies if anybody's feeling sick with me scrolling up and down on the screen here. That then took us through to the 2021 conference. So in 2020, we'd come to the conclusion that actually sourcing and providing and, and looking after all our raw materials in a responsible way was important, but in 2021, we thought, okay, but how do we actually do it? What are the different tools, tips, tricks, and techniques we can use if we want to truly understand how do we make responsible raw materials a reality? And that is what gave rise to our conference in 2021, which was called the ESG Toolbox. And this little infographic that we put together here with a whole host of different ideas, of course, supported by another week of fabulous talks and interviews and ideas. This really got us going in terms of, OK, this isn't just a theory or a nice vision. This is something that we can really do. And actually, there's a whole host of people across the world that are doing different bits of this successfully already. So that was the premise behind the ESG Toolbox Conference, which took place in 2021. I should also mention that it was at this point in time as well. So earlier on in 2021, we put together something called the ESG Reporting Roundtable, which actually is in the depths of geology, 
So as a geologist myself, so I haven't actually introduced myself yet either. My name is Dr. Sarah Gordon and I like rocks, but I also like sustainability. Um, and I really enjoy hearing different people's perspectives with regards to raw materials. And it's because of this that back in 2021 and before that, we put to together a round table session in January and we pulled together lots of different individuals from across the world of geological mineral reporting. So when we're trying to understand what might be in the ground, what different data sets and criteria do we need to pull together so that we can promise to someone, yeah, this was this is what we think might be in the ground beneath our feet. So we also put together this conference here, which was just a day uh, day long um, that involved people talking to us from everywhere from Australia to Canada, China, Indonesia, Mongolia, South Africa, Europe, the US, you name it. We spoke to them and we said, OK, what are you doing with regards to these areas? And the really awesome thing is that a lot of these conversations that weren't just held during this particular session back in 2021, there were lots of other conversations going on at the same time. But a lot of the ideas that people were discussing back in 2021 are now incorporated into these reporting codes. So what that means is that the world of sustainability is well and truly being drawn into how we share what kind of rocks we think might be in the ground beneath our feet. So that's pretty awesome. And that in part came out of some of the work that we did back in 2021. Moving forwards to 2022, um, and the conference in 2022 was focused on the just energy transition. And what we asked ourselves was, what on earth does that mean? Because if you go and ask somebody who works in a different sector or a different country, the concept of a just transition can mean very different things to very different people. And the hypothesis that we were posing here was, can mining as an industry act as a mechanism through which we can unlock the full potential of a just energy transition? Or are we just totally mad? thinking that that might actually be a real possibility. And that is a case here where you can see again, another full blown conference that we put together during those weeks of May in 2022, where we really explode, well, explored um, many of those different aspects of a just energy transition and the role of raw materials within that. Now, I personally spent all of last week in Geneva at the United Nations. And to be honest, a lot of the conversation that was had there I felt very enhanced by this particular conference that we had been lucky enough to host all those years ago, because a lot of the discussions that were had back in 2022 are beginning to actually come to fruition now in 2024, which is really exciting. Rolling forwards to 2023, and what did we talk about last year? Well, last year, we spoke about trust. Now, I know that Andy Reynolds has got a lot to say on the concept of trust, and I'll bring in Andy in a second to share his thoughts on responsible raw materials as a whole. But last year, we explored the fact that within material value chains, i.e. raw material value chains, the need for trust, be it between different stakeholders or be it between different component parts in this system is absolutely vital. And so that conference last year, again, included a whole host of speakers from across the world sharing what they felt was actually meant by trust. And we explored this, be it from everything from an academic level through to how it was manifesting on the ground in different parts of the world. And again, this has set us up really, really well, because anybody who's been working in the raw materials space over the last 12 months will probably have sat through a panel session where that concept of trust was used. And so this discussion that we had a year ago was great because it was one of the first conferences actually where trust was that core theme that was used throughout the entirety of the discussion. So those are our, some of our key past events. 
just in case some of you haven't been to the website before, um, feel free to explore things like who we are, but then also things like our learning materials as well. And you'll be able to go and um, explore various different interesting reports or teaching materials. These are not things that we've put together. We are purely acting as a conduit through which you can go and explore other people's material. If you have material that you would like us to share through our website, we'd be delighted to do so. So please just put it into the chat or send it through to us in our email. You could find that in the contact us um, button at the bottom of the website screens. So feel free to share all of that with us as well. And we'd be delighted to act as a conduit for yourself so that other people can make use of your materials. We of course have the talks area here, and this is where you can get access to hundreds of different talks from the last few years. Now you can either start at the top and work your way through a little bit like a box set that you might want to binge on your favorite streaming platform. I say that with a wry smile, that probably won't be the most exciting way of doing it, to be honest. Instead, what you can also do is click on one of these buttons here, for example, so mind planning. And within that, we've got an array of um, different talks that have something to do with mind planning, for example, that have been curated for you. Alternatively, what you can do is up here at the top right hand corner of your screen, click on the little magnifying glass. And then here I'm going to type in Ludovine as I suspect. Oh, yes, Ludovine. Let's go and see. There we have it. OK, so what we have here is we have the talks that Ludovine has been very gracious to give to us over the last few years, which has been great. But also as well, what you have here is a link straight to Ludovine's talk that she is about to give very, very shortly. So if you want to know who Ludovine is, well, here is her biography, so feel free to go and check that out. And also her abstract for her talk can be found here as well. So you can explore everybody's talks by going into that talks page, okay, or going into the little magnifying glass and typing in the, the name of the person that you are looking for as a whole. So coming back to the 2024 conference, um, and I'm going to scroll just down to here where we talk about, OK, what does responsible raw materials actually do? So as you can see, we are that convener and facilitator of open dialogue. So what we're trying to do through our conference every year is bring as many different voices to the table as possible. We're not saying that anybody is right or is wrong. We just want to hear everybody's perceptions so then we can each of us personally walk away from these sessions and make up our own mind with regards to, okay, what needs to be done next with regards to raw materials. We also share all of this knowledge where possible. And I've just shown you some of that array or that library of materials that we put together over the last few years. And of course, we attempt to be that independent and neutral voice with regards to raw materials. So trying to, through the curation and the collection of as many different voices as possible, say, okay, what does, what does the world of raw materials actually mean? Now, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And instead, I'd like to actually welcome Andy to the stage because, Andy, we met through the Responsible Raw Materials Conference a few years ago. You have been amazing and you've come back to give us another talk later on today. But I wondered if you wanted to give us any of your thoughts with regards to what Responsible Raw Materials is all about and what we actually deliver. Yeah, try and try and keep me away. Like this is a highlight of the calendar. Um, so, yeah, you know, a couple of years ago, I was reading Green Swans, uh, a great book by John Elkington. And I had a bit of an epiphany when he uh, talked about people in the system change sector. Uh, and I suddenly thought, aha, that's the sector I'm in. Um, and there is no event that gets me closer to the rest of that sector than than this one. Um, you know, the reason I keep coming back to this is because it's so valuable to have this community of people who come together. This this is the one conference, you know, most conferences you go to, you, the expectation is that you're going to show up and say, I know the answer to this. This is the one place where you can show up and say, I don't know the answer to this. Um, and you have a track record of being ahead of the curve and enabling people like me who want to learn to come and, and immerse ourselves in a community of people who have um, perspectives to share and pieces of the puzzle. So I really salute what, what you and, and Rose and Ludovin and everybody else have uh, achieved. And I'm, it's a privilege to, to be able to 
come along and, and take part in it again. <laughs> Well, brilliant. Thank you so much for that, Andy. And I promise everybody, I didn't ask him to say such nice words. Um, but no, that's absolutely awesome. And it, it means a lot to all of us. We are, of course, we're a voluntary organisation. We're a not-for-profit. Um, the Zoom licence, yes, is is picked up by the consultancy that many of us work for. But the reason why we do this is because we passionate me believe that raw materials are incredibly important for all of us and where we do need to extract them from the ground or keep them in circulation it needs to be done in the best way possible to derive as much value for as many people as possible and, and this can certainly be done so thank you very much for that Andy fantastic now as Andy has said this is a conference where we um, really revel in people going hang on a second I don't know what the answer is but these are some of my thoughts and this is where I'm at at the moment and I will probably change what I'm thinking as those thoughts are coming out of my mouth that is quite all right and especially for those of you who are attending today as I previously mentioned please do feel free to engage with us in the chat um, the chat can be commenting on the beauty of the flags that are sitting behind Matt at the moment. So thank you very much to Chris for, for noticing all of that. Um, they can be commenting on anything from that through to the content of what we're talking about. Also as well, please do use the Q&A or if you're watching us on YouTube, use the chat that was in within that as well. And we'll be able to deal with all of that too.